Hi there and welcome to this pop-up Facebook Live video blog on COVID-19 strategies dealing with fear. I'm Dr. Z, creator of the Breakthrough System, and not only that, I have been kind of attacked by my uh, dermatologist <laughs> yesterday. So if you see this big thing on my face today, it's because you know the reason why. But anyway, um, I only want to take about 15 minutes of your time today. Uh, but we're going to go through some great information and strategies to minimize your fears and, and help you stay in control during this crisis. Um, you know, really, uh, it seems like every day things seem to be getting worse, uh, not better. Um, this COVID-19 virus has, has spread all around the globe now. It's doubling infection rate almost every two to three days. Um, I mean, even the UK government has said that a death toll under 20,000 is a good result for them. Um, Donald Trump says that keeping deaths in the USA under 100,000 uh, is a success. I mean, Italy and Spain are just overwhelmed, and and we don't even we don't even know what's really happening in Africa and India and South America. Uh, but but even before even before COVID nineteen came into, uh, in, in, into into the world, we, we were living in what's called a VUCA world, a world of uh, increasing volatility, uh, increasing uncertainty, increasing complexity, and increasing uh, ambiguity. I mean, it was a world in which high anxiety and fear uh, predominates, and it was increasing day by day. But when it comes to fear, when it comes to fear, the best way out is through. I mean, Helen Keller said that. She was deaf, dumb, blind, a woman who must have known what fear really meant. If you can just imagine living in a, in a cocooned world like that. I mean, she knew a thing or two about fear, and she came out, and she said, fear, the best way out is through. And she even, um, in, a, in her later years in life, got married, went on speaking circuits around the world. And this is a woman who was deaf, dumb, and blind. My goodness. Um, she said, fear, the best way out is through. So those who are brave, and Helen Keller was brave, um, they, and, and these people who deal best with fear, that they're not superhuman. And they're also not fearless. It's just that they they have learned to redefine and control their fear. They feel the fear, but they've learned to control it. And they have given us clues on how to do that for ourselves. I mean, they have learned to turn um, the anxiousness into excitement. They've learned to turn their a doubt into, into confidence. And they've also learned to turn their vulnerability into strength. This is what Helen Keller did. This is what people who deal with their fear can do. Okay. But they're not superhuman, and we can do it. They, they, they've taught us that this is what human beings are able to do, so we can do it too. So what we need to do, how do we do it? How do we do this? How do we, how do, we do this thing? Well, let's talk about the science of how to take control of your fears. OK, and if you've listened to any of my uh, sort of blogs or uh, read my blogs or listened to any of my video blogs, you know that I talk a lot about the triune brain. OK, it's a great model created by uh, Paul uh, D. McLean in the 1960s. And, and, and I remember studying this in the, in the late 80s uh, as a medical student. Uh, think of what a, what a great uh, model it is of the brain. And then I probably forgot it for a number of years <laughs> until I revisited it a, a little while later. But Let's just recap on the neuroscience of what's happening in your brain during uh, the COVID-9 crisis and how, it, and how fear works on these three levels of the brain. And these three levels are uh, the forebrain, what's called the neo-mammalian brain, the, the seat of our intelligence, reason, self-awareness, analysis, and planning. You've also got the midbrain happening there, which is really the seat of emotions, okay? The amygdala is very, very highly interactive in this part of the brain, isn't it? responsible for our pe pleasure and pain. And we've also got what's called the reptilian brain, which is really responsible for our instincts and the fight and flight response. But what this does, what these three parts of the brain um, cause us to do is to view the world through our beliefs, emotions, and survival. This is how we see the world, through our beliefs, our thoughts, our emotions, such as fear, stress, 
anxiety. And our survival is the fight and flight response. This is how we view the world. But this is where fear works. Fear works on all three levels. It works on our beliefs. We believe, believe something's going to cause us harm. We think it's going to cause us harm. We have fear. Our emotions are the state of fear anyway, causing us our, our pupils to dilate, our heart to race, our breathing to speed up, our forehead to get sweaty. This is what fear works on as well. Uh, and our survival instincts, the fight and flight response. Fear works on all these three levels. Now, I mean, I talk a lot more about this in my books that I've just released. Uh, it's up to you and the banana trap. Now, if you want to go into more detail, you want to learn a bit more about that, look, just, just go into the book. All you have to do is search uh, Zarcinas books, Z-A-R-C-I-N-S, Z-A-R-C-I-N-A-S books, search Zarcinas books, and you will come across these. Okay, I'll go into a lot more detail. But in, in, in a nutshell, Fear causes three main things, okay? It causes the fight and flight response. So we, we, we fight what's a threat or we flee it. But it also causes us to freeze. It causes us to actually stop. It was just like a rabbit caught in the headlights. It causes us to stop. So what I want to... Um, talk about is that um, we need to we, we need to get around these three um, uh, what, 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 what do you call it these, these three parts of the brain okay so we need to find a strategy to minimize fear and to stay in control all right so what is what is the great what is one of the great things that we can do to minimize our fear now knowing how the brain works we can formulate a, a strategy to minimize this fear and stay in control. And look, there are many, many, many fears out there, okay? Many, many fears. But one in particular has proven by psychologists to decrease fear by about 40%. One strategy alone can cause us to uh, reduce our fears by 40%. I mean, that's like if our big... Uh, monsters are out there. We can cause them to decrease so small that they don't cause us any fear anymore. So what is that one thing that we can do? What is the one thing that we can do to, um, to make our fear so small that we don't, that we are fully back in control? Well, this is going to sound really strange. It's going to, it's going to sound funny, but the one thing that you need to do is name your fear. This is a strategy that's been proven to decrease fear by 40%, putting a name to your fear. Now, I don't mean all the complex fears like hypochondria um, and claustrophobia and all those things that we uh, that are parts of fears. No, this is uh, simply uh, saying that, you know, if you've got a fear of heights, why not, called, uh, why not call it Harry? <laughs> Just give it a name. See, naming it makes it small, makes you bigger than your fear, makes the smear feel. Now, for instance, I've got a fear of, 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 of heights. I was up actually at the... Uh, Empire State Building this New Year's, uh, just just gone in New York. I was there and going all the way up to the top to about the 48th floor, I think it is up there. Um, and when I start feeling, you know, my heart racing, when I'm looking outside, I'm over the, looking over the edge, my, my bit of vertigo happening, I can feel the, the, the fear of heights uh, coming into me. I just go, hey, Harry, um, you know what? I, I know you're here, uh, but you're not welcome. And as soon as I say that, the fear gets small, I can take a deep breath, the fear goes away. I can control the fear, and then I can enjoy the moment on top of the uh, uh, Empire State Building. But what if you have a fear of drowning? Uh, why not call it Daryl? I mean, naming the fear, naming your fear of drowning will cause the fear to decrease 40%. Just give it a name. I mean, there are thousands of types of fears, okay? There's, there's the fear of needles. There's the fear of flying. There's the fear of death, okay? Thousands and thousands of types of fear. But whatever your fear of spiders, but if, fear of snakes. But if you have a fear, just give it a name and it will decrease. So I want to ask you, though, 
what are you going to call your fear of coronavirus? Because we all have a fear. Why not call it Carol? Why not make that fear small and tiny? Give it a name. Make it small. Because you are bigger than you think you are. Okay? And you are bigger than your fears. And one way of becoming bigger and bigger than your fears is to give it a name. It's as simple as that. And that really is my uh, tip for today, naming your fear. It's got a very, very powerful um, uh, effect on your fear. Now, I've just got a story to end with here. One of my uh, attendees at one of my um, uh, workshops uh, on procrastination recently uh, was struggling with the fear of making telephone calls, okay? Telephone calls, which is fine, uh, but unfortunately his job in which he um, was required to make a lot of telephone calls. So he was really struggling in his work. He was getting bad reports. He was not, he was not turning up. He was having a, a bad time of it. But when he heard a simple technique like naming your fear, he went back to work. He was happy. He was fine. And I know that he has turned his work career around because his manager has told me so. His manager said he's a different person. So a simple act of naming your fear can have a really, really big impact in your life. So while you're here, I, would, I wouldn't mind you if you just liked what you heard, if you could just um, tap on it. If, you, if you're on your PC, by the way, this is how it looks. I'll show you what it looks like on your mobile phone. If you just, if you could just like uh, what you've just heard today. And I want you to also look for uh, the groups that I have. If you can just scroll down and join the breakthrough group, that would be uh, wonderful because I can go into a lot more detail uh, inside these groups. They're private groups. You have to, you have to ask to be registered, um, but they're free. And I will talk to you a lot more about different techniques about fear as well, as well as many other techniques like stress management and things like that as well. So look at, but, um, so yeah, so go to groups, uh, join the group. Uh, but if you're on a mobile phone, look, if you can like, if you can like the, uh, uh, the the talk today, just give it a like on your phone and or just scroll um, right to left and you find the group. You find the group settings here and there. Just, just join the groups and you'll be able to find. So thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, I'm going to be here same time tomorrow night with another great technique on how to uh, get back control uh of 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 your life in in this sort of crisis situation so thank you very much be great to talk to you see you soon